I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. Uh, we are the Brilliant Idiots. Back New Year, baby. And this year's episode, not this year's, the shit. See, I don't even know how to do this no more. This week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile and it's so simple start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code idiot to save 10 percent off your first purchase let's start the show hezzy uh charla welcome uh, back bro man 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 nice long break i'm still on break i don't go back to breakfast club till the ninth. oh wow when you gonna go, go back to work all right i'm back are you back in the clubs and everything yeah we were recording pods yesterday okay i'm going up tonight so yeah, are you doing back. okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, how was uh yeah. how was the Christmas vacation? How was New Year's? You went to I was in Costa Rica and Colombia. I got sick in both countries. Really? Yep. Food? Yep. Food probably. Really? Yeah. Food. There was there was a virus going around though, like that RS uh RSV shit. I don't know. And I don't know. I is just, that what it was? Uh, What's it called? It's, it's called being it. in the third world, Charlamagne. That's what it's called. <laughs> it's called my stomach is built for FDA approved food. <laughs> that processed shit. I need processed. You need processed. I need pesticides. <laughs> I need all that shit. I don't want none of your natural nonsense. Okay? Nobody got to talk about organic shit. Fuck your organic, bro. <laughs> I had love Costa Rica. The people were great. Colombia, the people were great. It was amazing. But don't give me none of your natural food, bro. You know what's so funny? Americans always complain about the food in other countries. And it's like, it's because you're not used to eating natural shit. No, because we made it better. Think about this. <laughs> Think about this, right? Think about this. It might show in your lifespan. But it tastes great. Who lives less than that? You think that they living longer than us? Yeah. Ain't no way, bro. Only yeah. in Japan or some shit. I don't know, bro. I seen some. Well, I I'm didn't from... see one old Costa Rican. Really? I didn't see one old Costa Rican. <laughs> I didn't see one old Colombian. I'll just be honest with you. I didn't see like old, old. Like you see like on a park bench. Yeah, just yeah, watching yeah, construction yeah, yeah, or some yeah, shit. Yeah. I didn't see none of that. I saw young ones. Yeah. They were looking cool, excited, whatever. But I know me, for example, and I, you know me, I love traveling. I love other cultures. I love digesting. It's so much fun for me. It's the best I love experience. digesting. But then, you know what? <laughs> I didn't even know I said that. <laughs> I do love digesting. I can't do that shit over there. I'm not going to stop traveling, but I'm not going to eat none of their shit no more. If it's not FDA, I don't eat that shit. Really? Because this is how great FDA is. It don't even have to be food. It don't even have to be food. Remember when we it found out be the, edible. the yeah. fuck, the, 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 what was the goddamn company? Subway. Okay. Remember the, the bread oh, was yeah. made out of yoga mats? The bread was made out of yoga mats and the meat wasn't real either, I don't think. Yeah. Also, it's like that with Wendy's too. I, not, I don't know if it's Wendy's. Hilarious connection that it's only Indians that own Subways and their fucking bread is made out of yoga mats. Man, shut <laughs> up, man. I don't even know if any of that's true. <laughs> but it sounds These amazing. Indians are slick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but even the nuggets, the nuggets are like pink paste. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that shit, think about how great FDA is. It, it actually, it works, bro. Like, yeah. you, you can eat it and you're good. That is something too that though, uh, you know, the, 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 you say you didn't see no old Costa Rican. You don't see, you don't see old people when you travel, bro. Did you notice that? But you know, it's interesting because when we growing up. America's the only country with old people. Our But our parents ate pork. You know what I mean? What's they wrong they, pork, bro? As they say it's everything. People, they drink nah, nah. milk. Pork is bad until you cigarettes. Pork is bad until you FDA. If you take pork and you FDA, yeah. Think about it. green paste ain't good until you FDA, <laughs> right? Like green paste is bad or pink paste, whatever. And then if you FDA, it's oh, good. Oh man, that we need to do that study. I need to know if America's because I saw that that uh, people are living less now. Yeah, that they, they're dying at like seventy. But you know why? Where do people go retire? Coast of fucking Rica, Colombia, <laughs> probably. Up. They they leave in America to retire, right? All these Americans <laughs> go in other countries. When Americans stay here, they're old, bro. You might, but there might be something to that. I would like to see the statistics, though. FDA, bro, it's that simple. Man, just think about it. Pesticides. <laughs> Have you ever tried? <laughs> Yo, Pesticide. you can't even drink the water in other. Isn't that crazy? No, the that's water, true. That's bro. True. That's true. They tell you the shit that comes water. from the that earth. True. Because that's, that's not FDA. Yeah, 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 yeah. FDA water <laughs> is no, the, the best. No, the fact that they tell you only drink bottled water, there's something to that in other countries. What, no, like, no. that shouldn't make you a little bit scared? Yeah. And then I'm supposed to go, oh, it's just the water that's bad? Yeah. Whatever's in the water, going to be in the fucking chicken tenders, going to be in the other rapers, the empanadas. But it ain't nothing like watching a goddamn goat get killed right in front of you. 
little cute goat just walking around. <laughs> then, you know what I'm saying? Then somebody snatch that goat up and, you know, kill it and then we digest it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I like that. If yeah. there's just a stage where the FDA looks after what <laughs> we just killed. I like, I just need one little step where the FDA goes, all right, this, <laughs> like, you don't think it's awesome that you could walk into any store in this fucking oh, city right man. now and grab anything off the shelf at and it any don't make season, you sick? Yeah, at any, but at any season, any it don't season, matter. Any season, bro. Yeah. When you go any to the, season, you get avocados yeah. in fucking July. Which is silly, you know? But, but is it, is it silly or is it FDA? I, I'm with you. You're saying, I get what you're saying. You like GMO approved? Is that Yo, what it is? GMO approved? GMO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HGB. HGB. <laughs> I don't, you know what? Hey, whatever FDA, whatever three letters, I fucks with it. Oh man, I fucks oh, with oh, it. Man. That means it's safe to eat and drink. <laughs> How was your experience other than the food, though? You don't have an experience when you're sick. You were sick, like you were sick, sick. I had beautiful few days, and then once you get sick, it just saps all your energy. Wow. I, I, I you had to leave. Like you had, like, the runs or something. No, nah, bro, I had to leave New Year's at 1130. No. So you ain't even get to the, see the ball drop? Nope. Like, what kind of sick? Like, nauseous, sweats? Like you, you know what it was? It's like, literally, you cannot do any. It, it, it saps all of your energy, wow. your entire body, even right now. I look pathetic. Well, I thought it was the mustache, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was fitting in. I ain't gonna lie. I was fitting in. I was with my people when I. That's why they were surprised I got sick when they saw his mustache. Yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. "You are from here, bro. <laughs> you don't get sick when you eat this food. You don't have to take no pills or nothing." Because before I left for a Ghana, I had to do a yellow fever shot, and I'm still taking malaria pills now. You, you had to take, take a yellow fever shot. Yeah, I had to do a yellow fever shot, and then you had to do a uh, two <laughs> malaria pills yeah. before you left. Chris ain't never taking a yellow fever <laughs> shot. <Never. laughs> Chris wouldn't. Chris wouldn't have a life. Hey, Chris wouldn't have a life without <laughs> yellow fever. <laughs> Best thing to happen to him in his life is that fever, bro. Spike Yee made yeah. that movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got yellow fever. She Yo. got yellow fever. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You didn't even have to change his name. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I had to do the yellow fever shot. I had to take malaria pills two days before I left. God damn. Take them every day while I'm there, and you got to take them until the prescription is gone. Why those mosquitoes out there got malaria, but the ones we got here don't? Man, I didn't even really get bit by no mosquitoes. Though. Like, they had the bands that you had to wear to keep the mosquitoes. I didn't... I but didn't... isn't that crazy? That their mosquitoes got malaria, our mosquitoes don't. I don't know if ours don't. They don't. Really? I've been I don't even know how malaria is spread. Is malaria spread by mosquitoes? I don't know. Yeah, mosquitoes. Yeah. But why is their mosquitoes got malaria? Yeah. Our mosquitoes don't. I don't know. They, they, uh, you know why. Why? FDA. Man, shut up, man. You don't. You think the FDA gonna let? FDA you don't think the FDA will let mosquitoes carry all that malaria around here in America? We got rid of all the organic mosquitoes. Done. Put GMO mosquitoes there in for the ecosystem. Nobody gets malaria. There we go. All good. I'm with it. Come on. Now. God damn. Did you drink like that again? <laughs> what? Hey man, were you on his single I for that, that one? Visit, oh my Why'd you lord! Wrap your goddamn lips around the whole thing. I mean, hold. Come you don't on, gotta son. make it halfway down a bottle. You don't bro. sip water, son. bro. Come on, let me see how you do. You <laughs> Yo, man, we eight minutes in. You try to make Gay Magazine again? This is how most people take a sip of water, right? Even Trump. Dude. Nah, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. See, that's a how sip. you do it. I how take goats. Yo, son, that's crazy. Yo, yo. I take goats. Yo. There's a what? Whoa. Taylor said it's a big hole versus the pole in spring. What? I don't know what you're talking about over there, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, I don't know what you're talking about over there. All right? No, nah, but, but listen, listen, that's my vacation. We learned some things about me. Uh, I had a great fucking time. Uh, it was awesome. Shout out to Luis, who just showed us so much love in Colombia. Luis. And shout out to the people in Costa Rica. I had... The best time. It was so much fun surfing, and it was just, I just loved it. My wife was miserable, but that's fine. Oh, you went there for the surf? I went there for the first surf. I'll never do that again. I'll never go on a vacation with my wife where she has no interest in the place. <laughs> that's a bad, no, that's, that's a recipe real. for disaster. Yeah, absolutely. You always got to ask your wife, where where do you want to go? At least can we both want to go? You got to have one thing that you want to do there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So That's true. I, nah. And it was just, she there was, was no shopping for her or nothing? Nothing, bro. Not even, no food recipes you could learn? Nothing. Yo, that's the thing. Even the, the, the restaurants were all right, yeah, but I was yeah, waiting yeah. for one. She decided to go ziplining once. 
And I was like, okay, at least there's a thing that you could do, zip yeah. lining. You that's, a, that's a recipe for disaster. That zip you line. a surfer but don't like the zip line? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you limit your risk taking. I almost died surfing, bro. And I had a uh, premonition about that. No, shit. man. Yes, 100%. Me, no, no, no. What do you mean a premonition? On the flight down, I was like, Yo, I think my leash is going to break. On my board. But that's a, that's probably just a common thing you think yeah, all the time. it's a common thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to get my rental board, and I look at the leash, and the leash, the Velcro is, like, worn as hell. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy that I had that premonition on the flight, and now I get this worn as hell leash. I go, bro, let me get a different leash. Yeah. I get a different leash. I go surfing the next day. I'm caught in this fucking riptide. You know what that is where it just brings you out. Yeah. I'm absolutely exhausted. I've been surfing for two hours. Literally, my arms, I can't move anymore. I'm like, I don't have any more energy. Okay. A wave comes, I'm like, I'm about to take this shit in. I take the wave, I try to do a move, jump off my board, my board gets pulled by some fucking white water. Another wave comes, I dive onto it, my board gets pulled, and all of a sudden, I don't feel my board no more. Wow. I'm in a riptide. I look, my board's over there, I got no energy left. I'm like, I either gotta swim my ass off for that fucking board. If I don't get that board, I'm drowning. Wow. If I don't get my board, I'm fucking drowning. I go, I swim, I fucking, another wave comes, finally I get my board and then I go and I finally do it. But how crazy is it that I had a premonition that the leash was going to snap, I changed the leashes so it wouldn't snap, and the new leash snapped. Yikes. Isn't that scary a little well, bit? That's why, that's why anxiety is like, uh, well, your brain in general, because I always say your thoughts become things, and what causes anxiety a lot of the times is like we think about the worst possible thing that could happen, mm -hmm. and then when it happens, you're we like, drive ourselves crazy because we like, I did that I'm to psychic. myself. No. I'm psychic. <laughs> I don't think you say, I mean, I just think that's a natural thing to think. I would be thinking that if I was like, as soon as you say, yo, you want to go serve, I'd be thinking all the worst possible things that can yes, happen. Yes, I do that too. I go, I'm like Dr. Strange with that. I got a million different fucking scenarios. <laughs> I work out every single one. I don't know why this leash shit popped out. Yeah. Anyway, but I had a fucking great time surfing. It was awesome. Costa Rica is a fascinating country. Like, fascinating. I'm going to go. Yeah, you should, you should check it out. It is so cool. Okay, I, but I want to hear about Ghana. Nah, we went to Ghana, man. Um, you know, Ghana, I wanted to go to Ghana for the, uh, the last couple of years. I was why, gonna... why Ghana specifically? Um, I was gonna go to the door no return in uh 2020. You know, what is the, what is that? The door no return is where the slaves, you know, that was the last place they walked out of before they boarded the ships to, you know, be sent throughout the diaspora for enslavement. You know, whether it's uh, and if I'm explaining this right, not just America, I'm pretty sure that it was the Caribbean and everywhere else. Yep, South America, Central yeah, America, North. You America. know, yep. so um. I just wanted to go to Ghana for the past couple of years because everybody was just telling me how amazing Ghana was. Like, mm. literally, everybody was like, oh, the nightlife is crazy. The food is crazy. You know, you did your ancestry test. You're 97% West African. Like, that's where you, you know, should go. And so I was just like, you know what? Why not bring in New Year's in Ghana? Plus, you know, in Belly, right? Like, you know, I did this for the culture because Belly didn't have the money to shoot in Africa. Mm. You know, people forget that at the end of Belly, Nas and t Boz was in Africa, but it was just a voiceover. On New wow. Year's Eve, you know? So as I was there, I kept thinking that, especially on New Year's Eve, I'm like, yo, this is what they couldn't afford to do. Wow. Right? So I just wanted to go. And it was absolutely, positively incredible. Wow. Now, since you started off with the worst thing about the trip, yeah, tell I'll me. start off with the worst thing about the trip. Yeah. The service. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean by that? The service. They, they, they don't get service. Let me tell you something. No, yeah, no, yeah. no. I ain't talking about phone service. I'm talking about service. Yeah, the service. Yeah, yeah, they don't get it. Yeah. Let me tell you something about service in yeah. Ghana. Yeah. It is the nicest, most terrible service you will ever receive. Talk to yeah. me. Talk <laughs> These people are so nice. Talk These people are so loving. They yeah. when they say when they say welcome home, they really mean that shit. Do you ever walk into your parents' house and they're like, "Oh, happy to see you." Yeah. But ain't nobody doing shit for you. Yes, yeah. You you you're, you got to do it. You have to go do everything that yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. They're not gonna fix your plate. None of that. The service is terrible, but they're so nice about it that you can't even be. Yeah, bad. yeah. So, but then you also you're like, well, this is why your economy is like this. I guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, if, if you're trying to be a service industry, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know. But that is one thing that I, you even hear people from Ghana talk about. They talk about like, that is something that we have to tighten up, especially being that we're getting so such an influx of tourists, not just yeah. from America, but yes. from Europe. There's so many black people from so many different places going to Ghana. You Bro, know what I mean? This is, it's not a Ghanaian problem. In Colombia, I saw the same thing. Really? It's like, I have to ask for the check four different times before I got it. Really? Four different. Uh, can I have the check? Can I have the check? I'm trying to pay you. Yeah, but the check is fine. But when you got to wait two and a half hours for food. Oh no, that's great. Three hours for food. No, that's. Great. And this is this is when I was 
told to come to this place <laughs> because it would be prompt service. Oh, wow. But, but other than that. Yeah, if you're waiting, I can't imagine how long the other people are waiting. They don't give a, They don't care who you are. They do. You think so? I think they do. I mean, because you're an ambassador for the country. You're going to talk about your experience to all these other people. And you're going to convince oh, them to I, potentially I still go. had a great time. I mean, the, the, I put it like this. The wait is worth it. I only had that experience in one restaurant. Mm. Every other time I had to wait, it was like room service. And then once you get the, once you understand that they move on their own time. Yes. Then you just. What time would you call that? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I did think. I said that a few times. <laughs> what did you say? I did say. I said. What <laughs> What did you I say? Did say? I said, it's good to know that it's universe. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. I said that a few times. I did say that a few times. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, other than that, man, it was an incredible experience. I think everybody should, you know, go, whether you're black, whether you're white, whatever, just because, like, even the slave castles, man. Slave castles? Yeah, it's two. It's uh, Cape Coast Castle and it's, uh, what is it called? L, L, look it up for me, Taylor. L, L, I didn't go to that one. I went to the Cape Coast Castle, El Mina. I think it's El Mina Castle. Okay. And it's just like, it's really slave dungeons. Mm. You know, so it shows you where the slaves were held captive, the female dungeons, the male dungeons, the dungeons that they sent the unruly slaves who they could not get to, you know, compromise or conform in any way, shape or form. They would mm. just literally throw them in this slave, this one dungeon and you don't come out till you die. Uh, they don't feed you. They don't give you nothing to drink. It's completely dark. Nothing. And they packed you know, a bunch of slaves in there. That w- that that one was so crazy because, like, my daughter, my seven-year-old, she had a visceral reaction to that dungeon. Mm. Like, we went to a bunch of other, other, other dungeons, but that one specific dungeon where they say, people, this is where you went, to, you know, to die. Like, when she got in there, like, she was just like, yo, I'm scared. And she mm. just started grabbing on people's legs. And my, my four-year-old daughter was putting her prayer hands together. And I just it's, just, it's just interesting how energy is, like, how you can feel it. But, People go to those uh, slave castles and they always feel like everybody that I've heard, <clears throat> they always say they go and they cry and, you know, they're sad and they're upset. And I can understand that, but I didn't have that experience. I left uh, feeling inspired. Why? Um, Because those, those people withstood all of that and they survived and I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I wouldn't be here if they didn't live through those conditions. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And like, uh, you know, <clears throat> you hear both stories, right? You hear stories about the slaves who rebelled, the slaves who fought back, the slaves who decided, you know, they did to kill themselves, whatever, the enslaved who decided to kill themselves. But there's some that just went through that process. Mm-hmm. They went through that whole process. They got on those slave ships. They mm-hmm. came over here, and I, I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't mm-hmm. for them, you know? Yep. So it just left me feeling kind of like, inspired i look at those stories as, as stories of of survival mm. you know as sad as they are as tragic as they are i look at those stories as as stories of survival so you know i i thoroughly enjoyed ghana and I, I it's interesting to me how south carolina and ghana the country of ghana looks so similar mm. like as i'm going to places like uh the, the waterfall or you know, even going to the castles or going to where the slaves took their last bath, you're going down these long dirt roads, you know, you're going through these woods. I'm like, yo, this, I'm literally looking like, yo, this looks like South Carolina. You're mm. seeing kids run through the wolves, clothes on the line. It looks like South Carolina in the eighties. It looks like how I grew up, like wow. literally the houses, you know, the, the with the tin roofs and the, the wood that doesn't look the best, look like it could fall apart at any moment. Like, but I'm like, yo, this, that's how my grandma house look that's how my grandma's brother's houses look wow. like literally it looked like south carolina so it just all makes sense when you think to yourself like man i'm 97 percent west african when the international african-american museum that we're building in charleston south carolina that's just well it's built it's opening up this year it sits on gatson's wharf and when you look at gatson's wharf that port it's a straight shot to West Africa. And they say mm. like over 60% of all enslaved Africans came through that port okay. wow. in Charleston. So I don't know. It just, it just, it was just a different uh, connection for me, man. And I, when you were there, mm-hmm. is there like a historical, a historical account of the Ghanaian people that were involved in the slave trade at all? How did they reconcile that? Like, do, do they know the families? You know how like we know the yeah, descendants yeah, yeah, of yeah. slaves. Like today I saw a video where like Edward Norton, the actor, found mm-hmm. out that he was like a descendant of a slave owner. Mm-hmm. Right. And there are different Americans that find out that they're like the descendants of slave owners. 
do they know that who the descendants of like the slave sellers are over there who like profit off the slave trade? And then how are they treated based on that? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I've i always heard of Nigeria's involvement in the slave trade. Mm. I've never really heard of. I'm not saying it wasn't. You right. know what I mean? And I, I don't remember him speaking about that on the trip. That would that would have been a good question to ask. I've never heard of Ghana's involvement in the slave trade. I'm not saying that they didn't. I just don't know. Well, I've definitely heard of Nigeria's involvement in the slave but trade. But it must have been right if they had the the slave castles and stuff. Like, I don't think those were built by the Ghana the Gha- Ghanaians. I thought those were built by the Portuguese, the Spanish. I, I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. I mean, I was I was paying attention, but I don't remember that one. My assumption is there's probably some collaboration. I mean, yeah. I mean, for them, yeah, I'm sure. I, I definitely know Nigeria had a heavy, heavy hand in the slave trade. Mm. And um, where's, where were they at in the Woman King? That was, what, did they say? I thought it was Congo. Where was it? I thought it was the Congo. You said Wakanda? No, the Congo. Oh, mm. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. They, I, don't, I don't remember them speaking about that on the um, on the. I'm slave, just curious if, like, if they have, like, like we have, like, plantation homes here, mm-hmm. right? Which we know are homes that existed and were, you know, slave plantations. Yeah, but they weren't built by the enslaved. Well, I mean, they were. They were built by the enslaved. What what I'm saying is, but I guess what I'm saying is like, we know what these things, who these were built by and what they made of and like where the the wealth was uh, generated to create Mm -hmm. those homes. I wonder if there are these lavish homes in places like Ghana or Nigeria that are the descendants of the African yeah, parts yeah, of the yeah. slave trade. And then just how those people are viewed historically as, you know, I, I mean, I think we look now, like even the word plantation feels weird. I remember I had a friend who had like a wedding in a plantation home or not, like, you know, like, or is it, yeah. that's like a common thing. Yeah. Have like a wedding in a plantation. Like to me, I, it was like, oh, it's even weird to even that's have my, that in the name. That is actually my dream to buy one. Whoa. Whoa. Word up. That's and then my, what? Uh, I mean, a, a lot Started of them. back up. No. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of those plantations still produce crops. Wow. A lot of them. Yeah. Like most of them, they, especially in South Carolina, they still produce crops right now. So it's like, yo, it would be dope if you bought a plantation and then like, you know, you took the money from those crops and, you know, like gave money back to the descendants of you oh, know, wow. those slaves, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you, broke, you, you, you go back and because you can get the history, right? Yep. You can get the history of the descendants of the enslaved people who lived on those plantations and you start directing money from, you know, those crops from those plantations right to those families. Wow. Like that, you know, that's something I've always, you know, I've, I've, I've thought about doing. I, I've, and I've spoken to uh, other other of my good white conglomerates oh, really? about doing doing things like that. You and know? what do they say? They with it. You know yeah. what I mean? I actually, one of my white homies came to me with the idea. You're never going to believe this. <laughs> so my friend Lenard called me and said, we should get these plantations working again. It's like, it's about time. <laughs> this guy's got some great ideas. <laughs> yeah, he's saying we should buy them all up and start them back up again. I they couldn't believe but, it. But they haven't stopped. I'm telling you, some of these plantations still produce crops right yeah. now. We could call them farms. Yeah. I would. Yeah, 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 yeah I would change yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. it's got to rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, would you keep the house the same? Um, depends what it looks like. You wouldn't want to like just tear it down just because of its history and then Nah, I bring I bring the good sister Aunt Kelly. I bring my Aunt Kelly there and stage that motherfucker out. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I mean it's let not it, the house's fault. The words. You know what I mean? No, no, you no. The house didn't enslave the hey, people. Let, like, know, let buddy. the spirits know y'all free to go now if y'all want to. You know yeah, what I mean? We uh, we got it from here. But like, yeah. you, know, you, know? Like, you know, like when you buy a property that um is cheaper because somebody died in it. Yeah. Like, most people like to like tear it down and like I ain't never seen that. You ain't gonna right. tear it. I think it depends like. on what the house looks like. like <laughs> if, if if someone Word dies in up. Oprah's house, nobody's like, nah, we gotta yeah, scrap yeah, right. this whole uh, shit. Like, that's, that's right. Keep it going, that's man. That's right. That's right. But now go to Ghana. I mean, you should go because that's a great question you asked. And it's worth, yo, going t- just on those tours alone is worth it. You didn't have um any of that Meek Mills situation style stuff? What do you mean? Because I think he was in Ghana and then... um. Oh, yeah. Me and Meek were staying got, at the same hotel. He got Why ran. was everybody in Ghana? There was Afro, uh, they call Afro it Kong. They call it Dirty December. Dirty, oh. dirty, dirty December. And like, I guess everybody just goes no, during December. Afrocon. Afrochella, yeah, my bad. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't just Afrochella. You had Afrochella, you had Afro Nation, and then Chances Festival, the Black Star Line Festival. That's, I think that's this weekend. And then you had like a bunch of conferences and like it was a bunch, it was just a uh, lot going on. But they call, mm-hmm. they call it Dirty December. Uh. Yeah. So Meek was there performing at um, Afro Nation. But you know, Meek, Meek, see, people don't understand this about Meek. Meek, 
speaks to a specific group of people Mm -hmm. because that bike culture shit is big damn near everywhere. You know what I mean? So if you a motorcycle guy, a four-wheeler guy, and, you know, Meek jumps on his bike and comes through your hood, you like, oh, shit, Mm -hmm. you know? And, I mean, they they clearly like Meek in Ghana, but he's tapping into a specific group of people. Like, there was a moment, I remember we pulled up to the hotel, and it was just mad bikes because the hotel is gated so you can't get inside Mm. but it was just mad bikes on the road Mm. to the hotel and I sat there thinking to myself I will never like somebody this much (laughs) I will never (laughs) like somebody this much while I'm sitting outside the hotel you know waiting for them to pull up Mm. so I mean he 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 tapped right in to that bike culture in 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 Ghana and I was even thinking about this just on some rap shit like is Meek the first rapper that was like really in the bike culture no, DMX. No, 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 no. Rough I knew you was going to say that. Yeah. Rough Riders for sure. Yeah. But I ain't never saw DMX on the bike doing no tricks. God bless the dead. I never yeah. saw the locks on the bike doing no tricks. That's very true. Yeah. That's Philly shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, Meek is actually on the bike. He's doing tricks. He's yeah. got girls about to scrape their back. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like they're actually doing tricks. So he's into the bike culture in a different way. I, and it, yes, Rough Riders absolutely positively did a lot for bike culture. There's a Rough Riders bike club everywhere you go. But I'm talking about as far as an artist. I've never seen an artist. Who's personally that invested. Personally on the bikes in that way. I, I, I be thinking, I wonder if Meek missing money. Like, Meek should be, like, all in on something, right? Like, he should have his own four wheel or oh, his own apparel like his own bike, brand like bike. Dream Chasers apparel yeah, on the bikes yeah. or something, right? Like, yeah, something. I, and that's just my thing. But now nah, go to Ghana, man. The nightlife is incredible. Everybody told me the nightlife in Ghana was incredible, and everybody was right. And y'all know I'm not even not, I'm outside type of person. Yeah, yeah. But I was out every night. Taking what a makes pop- it so good? What makes it so fun or different? Yeah, I mean the fact that you know for the most part, I mean Ghana is a nonviolent place. Okay, they don't have a a gun culture, like, you know, they'll tell you like the most that'll probably happen to you is you'll get pickpocketed for your yeah. phone. Somebody take your phone, you know yeah. what I mean? Which, which did happen to me. Somebody stole my slides, my Yeezy slides one time, oh, really? but got them back in 20, 25 minutes. Cause they really look down upon stealing, like in a real way. They're like, yo, if you're in the market and I forgot the word for, it, but if somebody yells out, you know, whatever the word is for thief, they can like beat you up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, wow. You know? So it's what like, religion are they in Ghana? Uh, Chris, it's Christianity and uh Islam, I believe. Wow. Yeah, Christianity and Islam. But like, it's like, like somebody took my when I, we went to the last bath. You know, you took your shoes off and you walking down the dirt road. So my shoes were like in the grass, and somebody took them, and it took twenty five minutes to retrieve my shit. You just heard a bunch of yelling and screaming and language you couldn't understand, and in twenty five minutes, I had my shit back. Mm. <laughs> you know I me, mean? just like me. Me got his phone back. Wow! You know they took me phone. Me got his phone back. But the nightlife the phone is, got a GPS. You, you know, your sandals is way more impressive. It was easy <laughs> slides too, bro. Wow! Yeah. But, <laughs> and nobody had no remorse for me when they got taken here. Yeah, my you whole can't really crew was like, "What about the that fuck one? You get yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Did you have like armed guards with you? You got them right. Oh, okay. I was just curious. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. You well, didn't know because you just said there's no violence so, there. Yeah, so I was so... like, I don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how my anxiety set up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but the, the, a lot of people will tell you, you don't have the guards to protect you from anything other than what you saw with Meek. Gotcha. You right. know, the crowds of people, you know, yeah. pulling up on you. And, you know, you walking around with your family, stuff like that. So, you know, and, and they don't play. Them guards, do, like they don't, they don't play. What like do you mean? They, they do, they don't play. Bro. Were people running up on you? Oh man, nah, they don't play. It's different. <laughs> like it's, wow. it's, it's different to the point where you got to be like, chill out, relax, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yo, relax. But we had a ball, man. I mean, the Polo Beach Lounge. The restaurants are great. You know, food. You love the Ghanaian food. Food is great because it's yeah. hearty. You know what I mean? Mad yeah. jollof rice. Yeah. The goat stew, the beef stew, the fish. Like it's just. It's just, it's just cool. It's a really good place to visit, man. Like, you know, I, I, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I've been to Johannesburg. It's like, yo, Africa, we've really had Africa fucked up. And I'm not saying, I'm only talking about the parts I've been. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not, I can't speak for places I haven't been because I'm sure that those commercials they used to show us back in the day with the, the, the a lot of them were from Ethiopia. So I'm sure yeah. it's probably 100% true. But yeah. those places, Ghana, Johannesburg, you know, the parts I've been, beautiful, man. Really? Beautiful, yeah, beautiful, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Much different than the perception of Africa. Mm-hmm. Much, much different. So, I'm definitely going to Ghana again. Oh, that's Because I got I got property out there, but I'm I'm I don't think I would ever go that time of year again. Why? Too busy? 
Yeah, that's not my style. Really? I saw too many rappers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's that's not my style. It's, it's, it was it was a little too industry out for my liking. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like get, I, if, if, that's all I wanted it to be, just a little less industry. I'm glad everybody going though. You know, and yeah. and I probably I would have probably stayed for Chances Festival. Because Erica Badu's performing, mm -hmm. you know, and my wife loves Erica Badu. We've seen Erica Badu a million times through, throughout our lives. And, you know, Erica, she, she, I saw people, she DJed uh, my wife's 40th birthday party. So I would have stayed to watch her in Ghana. Mm. If the kids didn't have to go to school, I'd stay for another week. Yeah. Yeah. But it was dope. Uh, what else happened this week? Tori, game over. Can we talk about it? You want to take a break and talk about it? I mean, it's up to you. I've been telling you he's guilty for... You a weeks. goddamn <laughs> lie. I've been telling y'all that. I, I've been telling you, don't trust the internet. Uh, I've been telling you, yeah. Uh, I've been me, definitely... Me and Show's been trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Alex sure. and I have been sure. trying to tell you yeah. that believe you got to stop trusting Instagram blogs yeah. and shit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Come on, they yo. They sure have, guys. They've been telling yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want an apology as that's, well. That's Let's pay some bills Let's and we'll come back bills, and we'll talk yo. about it, man. Listen, guys. This episode right here, this specific one that you're listening to right now, has been brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with beautiful websites, okay? Engage with your audience and sell anything, your product, your content that you create, even your time. Guys, you need a place on the internet if you have a business. If you don't, your business is not legit. The, the business marketplace is the internet right now. So get your place with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. Look, they got these member areas, okay? And you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. You can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every single send. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head right now to squarespace.com slash idiot. Head right now. For a free trial, <laughs> when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash IDIOT with the offer code IDIOT for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. We got any church announcement shows? Yo, uh, I just want to say thank you so much to uh, everybody who watched Infamous, man. 12 million 12 views. Million, baby. I mean, just unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I'm just so grateful. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, that makes me makes me very happy. Yeah, I don't have very nothing. very happy. I'm at Breakfast Club will be back on the ninth. Um, new studio, new studio. Excited about that. I am. I I ordered something for the new studio, and my dumbass forgot to put confirm, and I didn't realize it till today. Oh no! And I'm like, I don't know how that happened. Taylor, you were there when I ordered this shit too, and I looked at, and I'm wondering why. I'm like, why hasn't it gotten here yet? And so I went to Google it and it was like, it was like your order is waiting for you to confirm. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So it won't be there till the end of the month. So, I mean, everything else is there. So it's just a little small touch that I really, really wanted for the uh, new studio. But um, yeah, we'll be back on the ninth. Um, and rotating guests, rotating guests. We're, we're going to start rotating guests. Guest host. Guest host. Okay. Uh, not the week of the ninth, the, the next week. Can you say... Uh... Can you say a few of them? I mean, or? listen, man, anybody y'all could possibly think of, I'm sure, would be a rotating guest host. You know, I, I mean, I, I, of course, I mean, of course, I, w I, I want to see the Jess Hilarious is there. I want to see, you know, the Don't Call Me White Girls there. You know, I want to see Kendra G. Like, I want, like, these are people that I, that I you know, I want to see the Teslin Figaro. Like, of course, it's mad people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, J Jason Lee, whoever. Like, I want to see all of these different people just because I feel like, you know, It'll be new energy all the time. Mm. You know, that's just the process I want to do for, you know, the next year. <laughs> it's just you know? funny how you name all women. And then Jason one Lee. Guy, one gig. <laughs> man, shut <laughs> up, man. I just, you did that. <laughs> why you got, why I got to be funny? <laughs> Yo, what, what about say, straight men? You still calling gay men funny? I'll just what, say, I'm, you said. What about wow. straight men? Yeah, what about no, straight, straight men? Can straight men be a yeah. guest host? If they want to. <laughs> wait, straight wait, men what? not as entertaining. What you want me to say? 
God, you the only entertainer straight man I know. I mean, that's facts, but golly. <laughs> no, nah, that's not true. It's mad entertainer straight men, but they're all comedians. That's true. They are. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I really don't give a fuck about any straight man's opinion if it's not jokes. I'm with you. Because they be that. wrong. Yeah, I'm with you. You know why that. they be wrong? You know, they be wrong and they be on their alpha male shit. Yeah. You know, and they're the ones that the internet calls misogynistic, and all of them are crashing and burning, in case you haven't noticed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no. All of them. Yeah. Am I lying? Yeah, yeah. It's they not are, a good look. It's, it's not, not a good turning look. out good for the guys that are the alpha males. Yeah, yeah. You know, the ones that the internet is labeled misogynistic, bro. Yeah. There's bro. a lot of wild shit happening to all of them. Very true. Now, I'm just saying, just, just, just do a little. I'm, I don't need to call no names, but just go look. Do your Googles. <laughs> do your Googles. Do your Googles. And y'all are the same motherfuckers that was out here, for whatever reason, kicking Megan Thee Stallion's back in. Ooh. Which I could never understand. Ooh. Because what I kept trying to explain to people, and you've heard me even say it on this podcast, she got shot. Allegedly. Like, like, uh, it, it, are you still saying allegedly? <laughs> All right, get sued. Because that's going to be the... By the way... How you going to sue me okay, for allegedly? Talking about, now we can... Now, that's, you think allegedly protects you like people think NDAs protect them. They don't know. They wipe their ass with NDAs and allegedly nowadays. Nah, me. Because you know what I'm happened? giving everybody NDA. Yeah, they call I, me NDA young boy. NDA <laughs> young boy. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. That's hot. Can I give a little game to everybody real quick yeah, when it comes yeah. to allegedly? I'm going to tell you how they killing y'all on allegedly, all you YouTube broadcasters. All right. Yeah. They're killing y'all because y'all say allegedly once. No, you got to say allegedly every, every time. Every single fucking time. That's why I just said allegedly. Every single time y'all talking about these situations, you better say allegedly. You better say, you know, sources say or whoever it is. You better say that. Because when you don't, when you just blurt out, she's lying, Art. He did it. Oh, you're liable, buddy. She got shot allegedly. She didn't get shot allegedly. She got shot. She got shot. Define the, shot allegedly. She got shot. Define, she got shot. Cut it out. Define shot allegedly. Are you going to be next? They got you on the list anyway, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, on that, listen, you on that list of misogynistic males. They ready to either die nah, not or in the jail. Not me, You bro. on that list, nah, bro. I ain't on that list, bro. <laughs> okay. I'm too nice with it, bro. <laughs> All right. I'm too nice but with it. But behind the scenes. Allegedly, bro. I, there ain't no allegedly. Behind the scenes, I've been telling these she guys. She got shot? No. I've been telling these guys for months. I how this, bullet how this case was going to end. Did I not? No, we've been telling you. I hate when you do this I, shit. Whatever. Literally every whatever. single day almost, we're telling you, bro, whatever. Tory shot her, bro. Whatever, bro. All they got to do is go back to watch, listen to Old Flagrant. <laughs> listen to Old Flagrant. <laughs> listen to Old Flagrant, <laughs> okay. yo. What did okay. I say on Old Flagrant? I said, listen, that motherfucker, you know how I know he did it? How you know he did it? Because he went out the next night to the club. Man, shut up, man. <laughs> Didn't I, I say that? Listen. I said he put out a whole that. album. You know he did it if he's right. guilty if he did that. Can, can, we, we really do need to talk about how... Allegedly. Because I, 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 I said it so many times behind the scenes. If you're paying attention to the internet and listening, getting your information from the internet, yeah. and listening to all of those YouTube bloggers and social media personalities, you absolutely positively thought Tory was walking from this situation. But if you actually read the court documents yep. and you actually were paying attention to what was happening facts, in court, facts. I, I read the court documents before the court case Same. and I told y'all yeah, I knew that shit. Where'd too. you read the court documents on the internet? No, I didn't. Where'd you read them? Where'd you read them? I got them you, sent to me. Via the like, what? Like, 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 like via, all media Via the what? Email? What do you mean? Email and regular mail. USBS. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, was it USBS? a letter that was sent to you? Or you read or an email? It? Exactly. Man, shut up, man. Exactly. Nah, 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 nah. Exactly. You're not going to get away <laughs> exactly. with this one. Shut You're up, not going to get away with this <laughs> one. No. You use the internet, too. Yeah. Listen. You was using the internet. Yep. It's okay to admit y'all were wrong. I agree. What's the first thing I did? I sent y'all that guilty verdict, and I said, Alex, stay the fuck off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> didn't I? You said, Alex, you didn't say me, because nah, you know nah, I knew nah, that Tory nah, shot. He said, said both of you. I knew that Tory. <laughs> Let me tell you something. He I knew, both. I knew that, uh, that Tory Lane shot Megan Thee Stallion. Seriously. God bless her soul if you and read, her feet. If you read the court documents, even before the court case, if you read the court documents, you, 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 I, I said to myself, number one, why are they taking this to trial? Because there's just too much evidence. Too much. Story. And number two, too much. Why are they even uh, who? I don't know who that they is, but who is controlling this social media campaign where they're trying to make the court of public opinion think otherwise? Mm -hmm. Because none of that shit is going to matter in the court of law. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what you motherfuckers think on social media in the court of law. It, it Nobody gives a shit. 
you can come up with all the evidence you want and you can make up all of these different scenarios and narratives and you can half-ass read information and make up all of these stories about what you think happened. None of that matters in a court of law. The only thing that matters in a court of law is facts and evidence. That's why I always say, listen to everybody. You got to listen to everybody, right? Megan says she got shot. You got to listen to her. Tori said he didn't shoot her. You got to listen to him. But what you actually believe is the evidence. Is the evidence. I agree. And when I saw the evidence in the court documents, everything from the gun residue on his hands, the, the phone call, wound, the, the bullet wound in her foot, the bullet wound in her feet, the phone call he made from jail where he said uh, that phone call was crazy incriminating, bro. But it was in the court documents. And if you read the court documents before the trial, you saw that. And in the court documents, the police officer says we have a recorded call where Tori is apologizing for the incident. That's what they call it in the court documents. The incident. Um, two witnesses, including the person who said you shot them, taking the stand against you. Kelsey, you know, saying, detailing what Tori said. The, the, the other witness who they said saw the whole thing, who said that it looked like everybody was jumping Meg. The defense, that's who you call as your star witness. Who? And that person gets on the stand and says, hey, I saw the little one shooting everywhere. Who said that? The other independent witness, the neighbor that witnessed everything um, from the house. But by the way, all of that was in the court documents. If y'all motherfuckers actually Just read them. read the court documents. No, they bro. don't. They go on the internet and they fucking send you articles from, from you know, all of these different blog sites. Yeah. Torylanes.com. <laughs> Yo, and by the way, it's ne- by the way, it, ne- it, it never stopped. Even I during know. the case. I yeah. know. The day of the guilty, the day of the verdict, Tory Lanez found not guilty on two counts and everybody retweeting that shit. I'm like, Yo, the internet is going to be the death of y'all. Yo. It's going to be the death of y'all. Yo. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's absolutely going to be the it's death of y'all. It's fucking crazy. No, but uh, what I think happened is that I think uh, Tori's people or someone was, was leaking information, was leaking information, but just one sided information, just hoping that one of the jurors didn't listen to the rules and went online. Because mm. the jurors needed, are in there, but the jurors are in there every day, Alex. I understand. But even if one juror just has a little bit of doubt, if there's just one juror that is just a stubborn person and holds out, that's enough to get to Yo, the Alex, if you were sitting in that courtroom, there was absolutely no doubt. Yes, but you saw how all the bloggers were saying how, um, making it seem like the information wasn't like so Listen cut Listen to dry. what you just said. No, 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 I know. Listen to what you just said. No, but that's what well, I'm He's still saying. talking about the bloggers. No, but well, look, look, look. Yo, so, yo, yo. Yo, stop dick riding. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yo, you be dick no, no. riding these so, bloggers, yo. So jurors, jurors Golly. are supposed to stay off the internet throughout the duration of the case. Yeah, they better. But a lot of them don't. So, what? Yo, even, yo, I mean, by the way, those jurors, you, they, they can't take that from But Alex, way, so. even before the court case, it was two years of this shit. I know. So, even, so even, even if you were on social media, cool, but once you're in that courtroom yeah. and you're listening to these undisputed facts, facts, like you're listening to a victim tell her story, but then not only that, you're listening to somebody else. Y'all are fucking sexist. Talk about yo. that person's story. You're Y'all listening are to a, sexist. a neighbor who witnessed it Tell the same type of story. You got three people say, saying they saw you shoot someone. You must hate women if you don't believe that. That's what I'm saying. You must you hate must, evidence. You must. You might hate evidence. You must hate women. <laughs> you must, you hate, must evidence. hate stallions. You, you must hate evidence. A lot of bro. people got fear of horses. That's one of the reasons why they, they didn't believe that she was telling the truth. Hey, Amen. There's a real fear of horses. Do you know what that's called? Do you know what it's called? What type of phobia that is? What, horsephobia. No, it's a diff. It's equine equinophobia. Something like that. All That's I, a real thing. I'm going to look it up right now. All I know is this: the lesson to be learned from this situation is, man, stop getting your motherfucking news from the internet. From the internet, There's bro. still reliable sources out there. There's still sources that you can actually read. Every single day of that court case, you could actually go to the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times. Equinophobia. NBC News and get actual factual evidence. Information. Information. Evidence. Why, 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 happening why, in that case. why don't y'all do that? Why don't y'all do that? Why do y'all just jump at the most cares about the truth and the lies more entertaining? Who said that before? <laughs> <laughs> what is your question? You got to get on the mic. Get on Taylor. the mic. Can you can you learn yeah. how to do a podcast one of these fucking weeks, please? It has been a long time, Taylor. You should know that the key to a podcast is talking into the mic. Yes. What do you think, though, about Drake and them kind of dick riding Tories? Ooh, that's a good question. Because didn't Drake say that she faked it or whatever in, yes. in a bar? Like in the lyrics and everything. Like, what do you think? Man, I don't know if that was towards her. Something shots. I still don't. She is I really don't. What was the line? By the way, I don't. What was the I, line? I, I, I tell you how I feel. I don't care. And Something the reason I don't care is because all of y'all, all of y'all were misled. But it was wordplay on the fact that 
if she got ass shot. Yo, but here's sure. the here's so he the, should do some wordplay apology. Can I tell you something? You sure? He should be like, I was in the wrong lane. Well, you just did you know some. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? you just did some wordplay right there. You yeah. didn't realize it. What I do? You said that we're all misled, but you could also call her misled. Shut up, God. He's still going. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he wants it. Uh, yo, I got that late, but that was good. He's still going. God, that was good. You on the list. <laughs> you know that was good. What you said? You know what you said, bro. What you said? You know what you said? You said that that joke wasn't fire right there? <laughs> misled? Right. Misled. Listen, still going, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't know what it is. You don't think that misled the winner of the bullet wound beauty press? <laughs> you need... <laughs> To, you on. need to look at the list. <laughs> now that's a joke from the Netflix special. You, this 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 the miss you need to be thinking. That's about. how long ago this case started. What <laughs> uh, we th we said? There's a joke in the Netflix special. It was like misled uh, something bullet wound beauty pageant, but it was referencing Meg Thee Stallion. That's how long ago that should happen. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. Listen, man. Yeah. All I know is everybody that was out there with that kind of energy. Everybody I see with that kind of energy. It's out. It's a wrap, bro. I support facts, bro. What's up? <laughs> I support facts. I'm not even going to tell you what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to chill out, bro. You need to chill out. You need to chill like, out, right? I'm like, 23 is the Jordan yeah, year. What Jordan yeah, you trying to be? Yeah. Bulls are wizards. You <laughs> want to... <laughs> My God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but for real, but no, I do. Stop stop, stop getting your information from the internet. Don't get your information from the internet. These YouTubers and these bloggers don't know what the fuck they be talking about. They don't read. And Except like I, some of them. Y'all, Some of y'all are fire. <sighs> I haven't found one yet. At least what? not, at least, at least not in... No, nah, I haven't found one yet. That's say not... what you're going to say with your hating ass. What, the black circuit? You was like about me. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you was about to say that. Which I hate it, but man. I don't want to be I don't want to say that because I don't I don't follow enough of the white ones. So I don't know. I don't know what the white YouTuber is talking about. But I but I know but I there think are black, black the black YouTubers, black internet celebrities that you follow, Dr. Omar Johnson. There are people you think that are spitting legend. facts straight. No, nah, not facts. I just listen, I can listen to anybody. I, I'm I'm open to listen to anybody. The problem I have is that I know that I can listen to someone and not believe it. I know I can listen to someone and say, oh, that's wrong. Mm. I know I can listen to someone and go I do my do that shit, I can go do my own independent I research and shit. see if what that person is saying is no, true. I can also do independent research, but I'm a prisoner of the moment. Like the most interesting <laughs> shit that I, you know what I mean? Like Because like, all we want to be right. No, I everybody just everybody wants to be right, bro. I'm a prisoner, bro. Listen, we all like being right. I'm a prisoner. What's the first thing I did when that guilty verdict came in? I sent y'all a text and I said, stop fucking listening to me. Told the you. Exactly. You said I told you. But, I'll tell you this though. What? I never I never got on the air and said that. Why I never not? got on the air and thought about what I thought about that case. All I ever said was, just wait until all the facts come out in court. Why'd you do that? Because you I didn't know what the facts were already. Uh, because I don't wanna I don't wanna be part of that algorithm where I'm swaying any opinion. You know what I mean? You swaying, I don't wanna swing it to the right side. You should have told it don't matter. Alex. It, it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you should have told Alex, bro. It, 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 Alex was believing Tori was innocent it, 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 it the whole don't matter goddamn time. I, I'm going to tell you why. I don't want to be part of the problem, good or bad. Because the problem is, yeah. motherfuckers want to be internet investigators. They want to be internet lawyers. They want to be internet doctors. You know what I mean? They want to mm. get on. They want to have content. So they get on these podcasts and they get on radio and they get on their YouTube channels and they just talk, 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 Can talk, I just talk. Ask you they a just question? chat, 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 chat. But are you trying to say that black media controls the narrative? Mm. Very much so. Are you saying that black media controls information? Yes, I've always said that. Oh my! Mm. So you're saying the BMs are somebody we got to watch out for? Listen to me. <laughs> I want to be clear about this because I've said this already. Listen, <laughs> yo, the BMs are crazy no, no, no. or what? Listen, I, I want to be clear about this. <laughs> you're saying it, not me. Listen, everybody always talks about what the media is not talking about. I'm gonna use the Brett Favre thing as an example, and I think I already explained this before. The meat pick. No, the uh, the the the, the, <laughs> the welfare when they were stealing all the money from the uh, people who. <laughs> the money that was designated for people in Mississippi for welfare oh. when they were stealing it to use it for the volleyball court. Oh, wow. right. Everybody was saying, how come mainstream media isn't talking about this? It's because social media wasn't. All, all mainstream media does now is react Copy to whatever social, social media. media is doing. So why is mainstream media covering Kyrie and Kanye all the time? Because y'all got Kyrie and Kanye trending every goddamn day. Ah. Why, was, why was mainstream media so involved in the Megan Tory case? Because that's what y'all talking about on social media all so the time. So they react to... It's really that simple. Black Twitter don't even understand the power it has. Oh, shit. Like, it's really that simple. If you want mainstream media to care about things, then y'all get online and y'all start making those things trend. 
Yeah, let's make things <laughs> like like yo. Well, why don't we make some shit trend? What? Let's do it right now. Let's start it right now. I mean, there's a million things that they could be talking about. Well, let's talk about it. It, it don't matter. It's not funny. It's not sexy. They're not going to run with it. There's no celebrity involved. Well, make let's it make sexy. it funny. Yeah. Let's make it sexy. How? What do you mean? Yo, do you how? realize how attra- do you realize how attached we are in America? To a lot of people didn't think this mustache was sexy until I put it on. Now that they shit still is don't. soaking up seats while they listen to podcasts. <laughs> all these women or identify as women skin soaked up. <laughs> Why just the women though? <laughs> Say what? Why just the women? I said women or identifies women. There's some dicks leaking. <laughs> oh shit! You don't think there's some dicks Holy leaking shit. right now, Al? Holy shit! When I just licked up my stash. <laughs> Holy shit! You don't think there's some dicks leaking? Holy shit! <laughs> Say again. Yeah, when I'm munching bugs. <laughs> <laughs> that is a crazy yeah, human. you're crazy over there, Taylor. He's really you a crazy, crazy human so. alive. You pissed There's off. A commercial. You didn't go I, I saw a commercial this morning with a guy grabbed his beard. He goes, I love the smell of food in my beard. Whoa. I like to smell my beard after a really good meal. <laughs> Whoa. You seen that commercial? No. There's a commercial. The guy was like, I love the smell of food in my beard. But uh, what else happened? Man. Why did Taylor boycott Africa? I remember you saying that you invited her, but she didn't want to go because she was too many black people. <laughs> Taylor that, boycotted Africa? That's what you told me. You were like, you invited Taylor, but she didn't want to go. I didn't invite Taylor. <laughs> I didn't invite nobody. <laughs> Wait, you didn't? No. I thought Nyla was there. Yeah, Nyla went. Oh. I, would be, I, I, I don't control the planes. <laughs> like, like, people get on planes. They know where to stay. Cap. What? What? Well, my, a lot of people was there. Kendra G came. Kendra G been there before, though. She's gone and gone before. Angela Rye was there. Um, a lot of people was there. Alicia Garza was there. Tiffany Cross was there. Uh, Sonny from The View was there. Who else was there? Why didn't you go, Taylor? Mm. It was mad people there. Like, Where'd mad. you go? I saw you leaning on a waterfall like a fucking bear died in one of your pictures that you just <laughs> did. Yo, 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 Alex, what's wrong with this guy? Yo, he's crazy. Hold on, yo. Taylor <laughs> posted see, the man. craziest pic I ever seen in my entire life. Usually Taylor's thirst traps are like on point. I ain't gonna lie. Let me see, I, we man. always tease you, but usually your, thir- your thirst traps is kind of on point. I ain't never seen Taylor with an on point thirst. No, no. Ah, some, you, yeah. She was like in Aruba. Oh. You, were, you were working it. It was, it was. People but this one right like, here. What's up with Taylor? Hook me up with Taylor. I'm like, yo, you nasty. This one right here. I'm like, why would you want? To? Nah, this one looked like she fell, bro. What? Some of God, I'm gonna get it. Hold on, hold on. It's the last one to load. Hold on a second. Wait. Hold on. You posted some shit. It looked like you fell. I got a. Come on, you posted. I got something. a video of Kendra so good too, bro. What happened? Because Ke- let me tell you something about Kendra G. My good sister Kendra G. Kendra G gonna turn up any and everywhere. Kendra G is the life of the party. Okay, but she, like where's the picture? On, Taylor? Like most people on Instagram, they they, they curate things. You took it down, yo. The, w- the one where it looked like you fell on a waterfall and then tried to look cute for one moment for the picture. It was a video. No, it's a picture. You know what I'm know, talking about. Know, you. So you didn't have a picture up of of you on a little waterfall in Philly. On a little river. It was on your story. There's waterfalls in Philadelphia? We both saw the picture. There's waterfalls in Philly? Nah, you playing games right Where'd now, Where'd you find yo? a waterfall in you Philly? You playing games right now, yo. They got waterfalls in Lower Darby, yo? <laughs> <laughs> yo, stop right. playing, yo. Nah, she took it down. Give me your phone right it, now I so I can it. look through your I can look through Boom. your story. Boom. Listen. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. We got a couple more things I want to talk oh. about. Man. All right, hold on. Let's talk. Hold on. Let's talk, because I, I don't believe none of this shit. Now, if it's... What does that mean? Like, you said it was on my story? Yeah. yeah. But what if you delete it from that, too? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, she deleted a map. You should know if you was next to a waterfall. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are you talking Where'd about? Where'd you go on vacation, yo? I didn't go anywhere. Lower Darby. So you just posting know. pictures of you on a fucking that's waterfall that's that's you didn't go on vacation? She want to get called out on a cat. What are y'all saying? Like, <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Nah, yo. Hey. Why are you going so, back to... I got to look at them DMs, yo. I got people going to... Who be in our DMs? Give me give me the first three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> give me hold the on. first three of the DMs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, give me the first on, three of the DMs, come on, bro. Come on, come on, come on. Stop give me the first three in the DMs. First three DMs. Ready? You ready for this shit? I can't. Ashley K. <laughs> the brilliant idiot herself. She be DMing herself. Corey Lane. Empty Thoughts. My podcast. Go ahead. At... 
Alson Alcina, whatever that guy's name is. August Alcina? August Alcina. August DM'd you? Word. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Okay. Oh, shit. Yo, okay, she, Jada. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see them requests, though. Let me see them deep DMs right here. <laughs> That's when you know it's real. Okay, I see some blue checks you're not even paying no attention to. Let me see. I see you. Let me see, yo. <laughs> yeah, I see you. Yeah, that's so annoying. Oh, shit, Taylor. Oh, shit, Taylor. Taylor, you really got it, yo. Oh, shit, Taylor. You Back really it up, got Dave. it. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Back it up, Kiki, Dave. right here. Kiki. Oh, this is some from Mad Weeks ago. God damn. Back it up, Tay. Okay. Come on, though. Tell me. Tell me, Charlotte. Oh, um. Uh, I was, uh, oh, uh, uh, what's the brother name? Uh, Damar Hamlin. He oh, collapsed God. during the Bills Bengals game. Um, tragic, tragic. I mean, horrible situation. You know, what I mean, I don't know why. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, wearing a heart monitor now because I, my, the way my anxiety be set up, I don't, I just be my whole life. I've been telling myself I got heart problems. Really? <laughs> like, Yo, it's just anxiety, so it's panic attack. You are gonna so, start believing it, bro? You better be careful. But no, what's interesting is my, my, my father. He had to have uh, whatever was past quintuple bypass surgery a couple years ago, and my uncle, he's had it you know, quite a few times. So he's had, had quite a few bypass surgeries. So it is something that's in my family. So whenever I hear like mm. cardiac arrest, heart attacks, whatever, you know, I'd be like, oh shit, you know? So I've been, I've been wearing a heart monitor for the past couple of weeks. I got to wear it for one more week, actually. And then they're going to do like what, a complete... Yeah, but listen, they've done a bunch of tests already and I'm fine. Right. You know what I mean? But it's just, that's just the way my mind works. Every time I see something like this, I'd be, holy shit. Like, because yeah. he wasn't even the only person. There was a guy from the Jaguars yeah, who, died, who, who right? had a heart attack this week, too. He was 38 years old, yeah. you know? Um, so it's just like, I'd be like, why is all of these heart situations happening, you know? And um, man, that right there, bro, that's got to be the scariest shit ever. But they said this, it was like kind of like a freak, a freak, freak accident. accident. Like, you know, he just got hit in, hit in the chest. The wrong way from what what we've been told. Yeah, and that impact to his heart, it felt like a car crash. Man, like, God dang. Oh, God. So I mean, terrible. that shit is scary as fuck. You, you want to know, know what I heard? What? I heard that the NFL told the coaches they had five minutes to get the players back on the field. And the coaches said, go fuck yourself. Uh, yeah, I heard. I, I I saw that, but I, thought, I heard that wasn't true. I, I forgot who said that, but I don't know if it was the. I saw somebody saying like it was somebody from the NFL Players Association or something like that, and it was like that absolutely wasn't true. They never even talked about it. Like uh, this it, is what I heard from someone who was in Buffalo for the game. Yeah. So I, I don't know, but that's that was the rumor. I th I mean it's horrible, man. You know, and immediate prayers go out for him. Man. Definitely is, prayers go out to him. Yeah. They, they actually just said that he's alert now. I, yeah, I, again, this is us trusting the internet. You know, the internet yeah. is, I think we all want him to be breathing on his own. We all want him to be speaking and doing these things, but I don't want to put that out there right now. And then God forbid something Let me look it tragic up. happens. It's, it's just. Last thing I saw. Oh no, his agent told CNN that. So that it said, Damar Hamlin is awake and has been holding hands with family in the hospital. His agent tells CNN. So if that's coming from his agent, you know, to CNN, you know, maybe. And I saw Fox News report that Damar Hamlin appears to be neuro neuro neurologically intact. Oh, my God. Thank God. That's Teammate the scariest player thing. is it's awake. Like, whew, it's like having that much time without oxygen to the brain can cause serious oh, and neurological ESPN, damage. ESPN is reporting it, too. Damar, okay. Damar Hamlin shows remarkable improvement. Agent says safety is awake. Yeah. So God bless. Oh, my God. You I know. mean, at this point, you're not thinking, will he play again? At this point, you're thinking like, Will he be able to live the same life that he was able to live before? Yeah. You know, is he going to have some sort of brain damage because the brain hasn't been oxygenized for like a long period of time? Like and the fact that they started the CPR so quickly. That's what that I helps yeah. it, you're yeah. saying? Yeah, that's what helps. Yeah. Wow. My man, Ryan Clark, said the realest shit, though, man. You know, what happens when your dream becomes a nightmare? Oof. I think the, the first thing, this is this, um, this is about DeMar Hamlin. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about a young man at 24 years old that was living his dream that a few hours ago, was getting ready to play the biggest game of his NFL career. And there's probably nowhere else in the world he wanted to be. And now he fights for his life. And when DeMar Hamlin falls to the turf and when you see the medical staff rush to the field and both teams are on the field, you realize this isn't normal. You realize this isn't just football. And so many times in this game and in our job as well, 
we use the cliches, you know, I'm ready to die for this. I'm willing to give my life for this. It's, it's time to go to war. And I think sometimes we use those things so much, we forget that part of living this dream is putting your life at risk. And tonight, you know, we got to see a side of football that is extremely ugly, a side of football that no one ever, that side of football that no one ever wants to see mm-hmm. or never wants to admit exists. When you see both teams on the field crying in that way, your first thought is DeMar Hamlin. Yep. The second thought is his family. And this isn't about a football player, right? This is about a human. This is about a brother. This is about a son. This is about a friend. This is about someone who is loved by so many that you have to watch go through this. I, um, I dealt with this before and I watched my teammates for days come to my hospital bed and just cry. I had them call me and tell me that they didn't think I was going to make it. And now this team has to deal with that and they have no answers. Mm -hmm. And so the next time I think that we get upset at our favorite fantasy player (laughs) or we're, we're upset that the, the guy on our team doesn't make the play and we're saying he's worthless and we're saying you get to make all this money. We should remember that these men are putting their lives on the line to live their dream. And tonight, DeMar Hamlin's dream became a nightmare for not only himself, but his family and his entire team. And, and you don't think about that when it comes to like football or even boxing or any of those high contact sports. That's these people dream that they're living and they're out there getting paid millions of dollars. But that dream can become a nightmare just like that. You know, these are violent ass sports. MMA, UFC, like, yo, football, boxing, like you can die out there. Yo, your life can be changed in one hit, one, one hit. punch. One yeah. hit. One hit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you what did you think about the reaction to what Skip Bayless said? Um, I think Skip Bayless, uh, oh, actually, I think what this, up, yeah, I think what this was is people were so angry about what happened because there was no one to blame, but someone got hurt. And I think a lot of times when there's no one to blame and someone gets hurt, we're just looking for a scapegoat for our anger. And I think that if you, I don't think what Skip was trying to do was troll in this tragic time. I don't think so either. But I think that people are just so upset and they saw this person that does commonly troll and they're like, he must be trying to uh, troll at this tragic time. Fuck him for that. His reputation preceded him. His reputation preceded him. Pull up the two I want to read Dick next week. Mix mix with the anger that people are experiencing that a tragedy happened with no real culprit. Like, it wasn't the running back's fault at all. None of this was anybody's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's football. Yeah, like, this is just part of the game. So he said, no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how, question mark, this... Late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. Now, this was like his third tweet because yeah. he already was tweeting about, yeah. you know, the young man and stuff like that. But, you know, this was what I found so interesting about this tweet. Yeah. How soon is too soon? Because the questions he's asking are questions everybody was going to eventually ask. Mm-hmm. Right. He just jumped out there first because, you know, to, to, to put that out there. But he also did add the caveat, which is which is so irrelevant. The, the magnitude of this game, the importance of the season, the playoff implications seem so irrelevant. Seem so irrelevant. Because that, that, that conversation he asked, that, that question he asked in the beginning, literally, because everybody learned from Skip, right? So that next day, nobody talked about the postponement of the game, when they're going to play again, yada, yada, yada. But yesterday, on yeah. all the sports shows, that's, all they talked about. Literally. From ESPN to Fox Sports, that's all they spoke about. So maybe that was the concern. It was like he was focused on that, not the the human life. But you got to go back and look at his first couple of tweets. No, 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 no. His uh, first couple of tweets, he talked. He was talking about the life. Let me clarify. Yeah. The perception of the tweet was he was concerned about the game more than the life. Yes. But if you actually look at the series of tweets and even look at the last line of that tweet, it's he's saying that this person's life makes all these other things which Seem are ir- irrelevant. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it, it it's was, rare that people are out here defending Skip Bayless, but I think a lot of like logically, you know, even headed people are coming out and being like, I think that he's been misinterpreted. Yeah, I'm not even misinterpreting. Uh, I'm not even def- defending Skip Bayless. I'm just like, yo, I know that this happens to everybody all the time. Mm. Your tweet gets misinterpreted. You mm. know what I mean? What you say got misinterpreted. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is it, right? Go, yeah, let me read these. 
What was the first one? I've seen so many horrific injuries suffered on football fields, yet never have I seen a reaction like this. And every other situation I witnessed or covered, the game always went on fairly quickly. The attitude was, hey, that's football. For these players, this was different. Yeah. Am I, is this, you know? And then the next week was, no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how this late in the season, a game of this magnitude, is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. Yeah, people just don't like Skip Bayless. Yeah. And like, they, were, like, like, they were incredibly angry about yeah. something that happened, and there was no villain. Yeah. So they needed a villain. Yeah. And I see stuff like this happen with comedians often, especially mm-hmm. our guy Duval. Yeah. Duval can put out something that's sensible, and everybody, you always trying to be funny. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, actually, in that case, he's, he's really you you know, making, he's sense. making sense. Yeah. You know, and, and, that, and that's why I said it was interesting because literally the next day on all the sports shows, everybody learned from Skip. So everybody was focused on, uh, you know, uh, the brother yeah. as they should have been, um, you know, and Shannon, t- no, DeMar. And then the oh. next day, everybody was talking about what to do with the game. Yeah. What should the NFL do? Yeah. So it's just like, how soon is too soon? You I know? think I think there is a too soon with a situation like this. I think the focus should be on the guy while he's still on the field. I agree. And I think the next day when you know that he's in care and there's nothing more that can possibly He's not going to die. Done, yeah, yeah, or yeah. yeah. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know that everything that can be done for him is being done. Mm-hmm. That we know for a fact. Then you can start pontificating on what's going to happen for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, uh, and and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down, but I didn't want it. Well, yep. Time out, time out. I'm not going to take it down because okay. I stand by okay. what I tweeted. Skip, let me okay. finish. Let me, All right, okay. Go ahead. No, you go. Go ahead. Let's go, Jen. Okay. I mean, I cannot even get through a monologue without you interrupting okay. me. Well, you could have came back, Skip. Well, I thought, Skip, just let. I, 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 I was going to no, bring no, up. No, this. I was just going to say, Skip. I didn't want to yesterday to get into a situation <sighs> where Demar Hamlin was the issue. We should have been talking about him and not get into okay. your not get into your uh, uh, your tweet. That's what I was going to do. But you can't even let me finish my opening monologue without you interrupting. Okay. I was under the impression you weren't going to bring this up because nobody here had a problem with no, that tweet. No. Clearly, the bosses wanted you to offer explanations. So clearly, somebody... No, they did problem. not have... Let's go, nobody, Let's go, Jay. The Skip Shannon thing is interesting to me, man, because I don't give a fuck. If you've been working with somebody for a long time, y'all going to have those kerfuffles sometimes. Yeah. you going... Me and Andrew have had them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've definitely had them on Breakfast Club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're going to have... It makes great entertainment. It does make for great entertainment, but every now and then you're going to have that. You're going to have, oh, somebody going to interrupt the person. Somebody not going to let the person finish. The person going to get mad. But it it just happens. It's yeah. just like, I don't know what y'all expect to happen in this situation. I just, you know, I just find it interesting when like other personalities and commentators are calling for other people to be fired. Like if the person isn't saying anything that's, you know, causing somebody to get hurt, you know, mm. cause, that's going to cause somebody to get killed. You know, it's just a difference of opinion. Yeah. We should be allowed to have differences of opinion with yes. people who get paid to give their opinion. 100%. You know what I mean? Because you're calling for that person to be fired. What's going to happen to you? 100%. What kind of line do you got to walk now? 100%. You know what I mean? Because I guarantee Dangerous you. If you're, game. That's right. If, if, you're, if you're one of those people who give their opinion and you're giving your opinion, you know, unapologetically, you're going to say something that's going to offend somebody at some point. Dangerous game. So be careful what you ask for. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you you like, I want him fired. I want him gone. This and that. Yeah. All right. Guarantee you it's going to be your turn at some point, buddy. Guaranteed it. Guaranteed <sighs> it. Uh, what did you think of uh, Barbara Walters passing? I didn't. <sighs> Bro. And it's, it's, I just didn't think about it. But it's, uh, she's a legend. But she was old, right? Goaded. What was she? How old was she? Like 93. And somebody okay. told me she used to lie about her age. So she might be even older. She might be 100 plus. <laughs> Yo, it's it's <laughs> hard to feel sad when people make it that long. That's, that's that's all we want. Yeah. All I want, give me 90 plus, I'm good. Yeah, I'm trying to say hit that century, my I dude. Wanna, I, wanna, I want 100, but it depends. You want 100 in good health. In good health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, good, yeah. good good, good health. All your faculties. Faculties, neurological, all of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Still want to dick to get hard a little bit. You know what I mean? You want me fucking at 100? You got to bust a nut at 100. That's fire. Dust come out. I don't know if I'd be That's fucking. That's fire. If I wanted to be touched. You, you know trying I mean? to get sucked at 100? Why not? Yo, 
Will our wives let us at cheat at a hundred? They got less. And I don't give a flying fuck. Right? I, I don't think they'll give a fuck past sixty. <laughs> like, I mean, especially when you've been with your wife for a long time. Like, hey, hey, hey who cares? He, where, where's he at? Huh? At sixty? Nah, come on, bro. You can't have any like, blasting your wife out. That's 60, nuts. 70? I don't know. Depends. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, we're not going to do all that. I don't know. I don't even want nobody in my bed. You get in the bed, it's sweaty. I'm going to tell you what I like doing as a married couple. Going to the script club, yo. Really? Man, we went to the script club in Ghana, bro. How was that? Flew to the Silver Fox. I actually still got some of the goddamn... The cash? I do still got some of the goddamn cash, bro. What type of... I was in it? there balling, bro. Ooh. This ain't number $30. Ooh. <laughs> Let me see you. <laughs> you big know, spender. Big spender. Big stepper. I was in there balling Let with that Let me see this calling, money that right here, yeah. money, bro. So, you hear me? That's, that's, that's called, I forgot what it's called, a city? A city? Yeah. A city? So it looks like it. A city? <laughs> I think you get 10 of those for a dollar. Oh, if I'm wow. Not mistaken. That's fire. You know what I'm saying? Man, we was in there having a good old time. You know what I mean? We, we was having a ball. Go to the strip club with your wife, man. That's, that's a fun time. You ever been to the strip club with your wife? No. Really? I don't think so. Maybe I have. Would you? No, yeah. Uh, no? I don't think so. Would you? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Why not? I don't know if it's my wife's vibe, to be honest with you. She might like it. Yeah, she could. She might like it. I think she would like to go as like a, a voyeur and like see the experience. It's a little exhilaration. And yeah. then for me, like I don't, I ain't been to the script. I was, th first of all, I ain't been to a regular club or a script club in years. You know what I mean? I definitely yeah. haven't been to a script club longer than I've been to a regular club. I haven't been to a script club in at least a decade. I don't yeah. remember. But, when I heard that Ghana had a strip club, <laughs> I had to go see. First of all, really? the women in Africa are beautiful. How were they dancing? Were and they I'm, like African dancing on it? It was all Afro beats, bro. No, but were they African dancing? Were they doing the thing like... I mean, Af the African women got a different rhythm yeah, to them. They you got know the, what I mean? Like the... Yeah. And, and listen, there was no down south nothing. It was no all... Af no, it was Afro beats. They were playing African music in the strip Get club. Salute to, to my guy, Louis V. Louis V was in there. Like now that? I was in there like Doing we were, that? dancing crazy, bro. It was it was a, it was an exhilarating experience. What? You know the dance I'm talking about. Put it bro? like this. Put it like I'll this. I'll do it right now. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. I, show, I, us, show us. Show us. Show let us. Let me see. Show. <laughs> no. 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 That's colonizer beats. That ain't no Afro beats at all. <laughs> no. Yo, we gotta go to Africa. No, That's for fact. real, yo. Go, Actually, I'm, we just went to Africa. Yo, yeah, Morocco. Yo, Ghana, Al, we bro. were in Morocco. I was like, I was like. This ain't Africa, bro. Come to Ghana, bro. Yeah. Ghana is it. Ghana, I've been to Johannesburg and Ghana. Ghana is Ghana is it. But the script club was incredible. Really? Oh, man. Because, you know, as a faithful black male, yeah. I knew that the only way I would ever get to see a beautiful African woman, you know, bust it down, naked, is in a script club. So when I heard they had a script club, yeah, we got to go. Just go to the script club. Yeah, how, what, it was, it was incredible, bro. Did you choose one up? Nah, nah, nah. Did you get a lap dance? Yeah, yeah but I wasn't, like, touching them. You know what I mean? Like, I, didn't, I was just, you know. Did you get bricky? Didn't get bricky. What? Didn't get bricky, but it is a good Afro, it is a good aphrodisiac for later. Oh, okay. When, when you back, when you back with the wife, you know what I mean. That is, it is a good aphrodisiac. Probably, I'm probably on both parts. Yeah. Like it's the script. Like strip clubs are fly. When you go to the and this strip club in Ghana, Silver Fox is fly. Really? Like it's a fly venue. Beautiful looking aesthetics. Everything. Like, do you know what? Do they know what that means in American? What? Silver Fox. Oh, oh, OG, uh, old, it's like old, old good-looking person. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but that's what it's called, and it's a it's a phenomenal venue. Thank you to Silver Fox. We had a great time. Yo, I'm coming to Silver Fox. Come to Ghana, bro. I'm, yo, listen, and my 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 property. Yeah, what I didn't realize property? I didn't realize I was getting clowned for this uh, on Ghanaian Twitter, but <laughs> the property is in Goy, G O I, the, okay. the, the 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 beachfront property, because some of my peoples on the continent they're doing um, an amazing project out there that I'm sure y'all will hear about soon. And so I have some uh, beachfront, beachfront but property. Why were they clowning you? Because I gave the I didn't realize that I gave the 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 office <laughs> address <laughs> to, to, to the put. I gave the office address, not the address of the to property. the beach. So they were like, "Ain't no goddamn beach over there." Yo, <laughs> you got scammed up. And it's so funny because I didn't realize it until you know you get back and not, since I was in Ghana. You know, I'm, I'm on like a couple of the Ghana blogs and stuff like that. And you see people in the comments like, has he found his beach in <laughs> Legon? I think it's Legon, Legon or whatever it's at, right. whatever it is. But nah, salute to Ghana. I got my Ghana name too. I'm what's, your Ghana, what's your Ghana name? And you know, I can't pronounce that shit. Well, what is it? Come on. But I, since I was born on a Thursday, yeah. it's Y-A-W. 
because it's, it's it's the day you were born, and then y'all, I, and then an attribute with that y'all. I don't think it's pronounced y'all. Y'all. Yeah, it's Y A W. Y'all. And then whatever the, whatever my it's, my other name is like cuckoo, cuckoo foo foo, or something man, like that. Don't let them make shit up. So man, you can say up, it. No. It's like when white people get the Chinese tattoo and, it, it, and they're like, this means uh, everlasting bliss, and it really just means mine. Actually, meant brave, noble. Cor- no, no, brave and courageous. Mine meant brave and courageous. Yo, they getting you, bro. Brave, courageous, bold. They getting you, That's man. what I meant. That's what I meant. But good for well, y'all, Ghana. Good for y'all, Ghana. Thank you, Ghana. Let me just I have absolute gratitude for Ghana. That was one of the best trips I had in a long time. Man, really? I mean, I go to, you know, we travel a lot. I love it, but I really did enjoy Ghana a lot. Like, a lot, lot. You making me want to go to Ghana, bro. I'm not going to We going, lie. bro. What's, yeah. What's up? We going. Please. You trying to pull up? We going, bro. All right, so when we going? And I and, and I know they would have love for you in Ghana because, man, there is no breakfast club in Ghana, but that internet is a motherfucker. What you think? What you mean? That internet, like they, 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 they've been watching Breakfast Club, Brilliant Idiots, everything for years on YouTube. So we got to go to Ghana. You know what I mean? Literally on YouTube. Like, literally on YouTube. It was hot as shit. It was like, Chris just asked me what the weather was like. It was like 90 degrees. It was hot. Like, ball sweating hot. It was nice. And you didn't get sick or nothing? Um, no tummy ache, nothing. You don't look like you got. I be wearing sunscreen. Um, I, did I get sick? Nah, I didn't get sick. Nah, I had the runs a little bit, but that's normal. Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> it don't take much for me to get the runs. I get the runs in here and everywhere. You got the sensey tummy like yeah. me, bro. Like you know, you yeah, wear it up. And you I'm at that point now. Tummies, it's like bro. my my butt is like pee. Whoa. It's like loose booty. Hey, Whoa. I got loose booty, bro. When it's time for me to go, I gotta go. Like Yo, same, I, maybe bro. it's because I'm getting older or what? It's like, bro, same, bro. And ain't no food and nothing. It's just like it's time. I got a shit. And if I like, I'll, I'll go in a second. My butt be like, yeah, oh, we going won't. now. We going right now. Going now. Get your fucking phone and get yeah. the book you was reading. That's get your it. stupid ass on the toilet. If I'm embarrassed you out here. That's hey, bro. Okay. I'm not. I'm with you on that one. But uh, Barbara Walters, Barbara Walters, R.I.P. Listen, Fabs. She's goaded, bro. Yeah, she goaded. Barbara yeah. Walters is one of the most savage interviewers the world has ever seen, and it is amazing to me how the same shit y'all try to crucify me for every couple Ooh. of years. When Barbara Walters passed away, y'all was on her dick for being worse. Yo. Barbara was super Saiyan savage. Okay? What'd she say? Barbara used to say the wildest shit, and then we're going we gonna to play some of those clips. Was she smelling seats? That was light. That was not light. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, smelling the seat. Yo, Barbara Walters shit literally <laughs> looked at Chris Christie and was like, you're fat. You know what I mean? No. R- yo, Rick, Ricky Martin, how, uh, uh, you're gay, right? Like, yeah, yo, she, you, y'all ain't been paying no attention to Barbara Walters. Wow. There's a clip called 15 Minutes of Barbara Walters Being a Terrible Human Being. <laughs> <laughs> We want to insert some of that in I here. Bet. Okay. Robert Walters looked at the Kardashians and said, Y'all don't have any talent. Yeah. You know, you don't do anything. Like, what is your skill? Like, yo, Barbara was savage and I loved it. She was amazing at what she did. Bar- Barbara Walters was Barbara Walters for a reason. It's and wild, and, and yeah. it shows how, how much society has changed. Change, yeah. You know what I mean? Because back then, all you said to yourself was, Man, she's asking the questions that, you know, people want to know. They got to know the answers you know what to mean? this shit. Courtney Love, have you ever done heroin in front of your children? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> you Gotta see the answer to that. Y'all don't even pay no attention because she comes in such a neat, nice package. Yeah. You know what I mean? Older white woman. A little speech impediment. Word is born. Y'all wasn't yeah. paying no attention. Corey Felder on there way before Me Too movement talking about how he's been diddled in the wow. business. And, and, and Barbara said to him, you're going to ruin the entire industry. <laughs> talking about not caring about the person. But the end. Y'all, y'all got mad at Skip Bayless. Oh, my God. Wow. I got, by the way, can't say anything act like I didn't enjoy it. You seen the Sean Connery interview with her? That's the wildest thing. Oh, the one seen. where he was talking about uh, hitting, be, the, hitting the girl or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, wildest yeah, thing yeah, you ever yeah, yeah. seen. Listen, man, times were totally different. Times are different, bro. And, and that, is, that is who came before us and who we learned from. Mm. So, uh, you know, the course correction that has happened is starting to balance itself out, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I don't even know if this shit was okay. Yeah, it might have been not okay even back then. And she did do an episode where she apologized for a lot of the stuff that she did. Aww. This was like Good in 06. Her. But I don't know if it was for a lot of things, but it was definitely the uh, the Ricky Martin 
the Ricky Martin interview. But rest in peace, Barbara Walters. Rest in peace to another legend that we lost, man. Gangsta goddamn boo, man. Mm. Oh, my God, man. Gangsta boo. Uh, they said no foul play. Um, I guess they're waiting on the autopsy to come back. But, man, if you don't know who Gangsta Boo was, she was a female member of 3-6 Mafia, oh, no. an absolute motherfucking legend. You know what I mean? Speaking of script club anthems, where them goddamn dollars at, mm. you know? And Gangsta Boo bodied every 3-6 track she was on. And rest in peace to Gangsta Boo. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly, as a, as a brother from down south, you know, it's, it's hard to explain, you know, what female MCs like Gangsta Boo or Mia X meant, mm. but if like you grew up loving Three Six Mafia, you grew up loving No Limit. They weren't like token women in the crew, mm. you know, because it was a time where like every crew had to have a woman rapper. Yeah, they were body and shit. Oh wow! Like I, I they body and shit. Like I said, Mia X was to me top three lyricists in No Limit. If wow. you ask me, that's my personal opinion. And I'm gonna put Mia X. I'm gonna put you know Fiend. I'm gonna put um I guess I guess you would count Soldier Slim. Soldier Slim was on no limit, you know what I mean? Mystical, but yeah, I'm definitely putting and, and if, if top five no no limit lyricists, I'm definitely putting Mia X. And Gangsta Boo definitely, you know, was a, a, a amazing lyricist from 3-6. So rest in peace to the Gangsta Boo, man. She was and she was always the person that would always just check in and via social media or whatever it was, and she was just a very good, kind hearted, you know, person. So, you know, salute to Gangsta Boo. Man, Pele died too. Did you even see that? Pele. Yeah. Pele died too. That one, that one went kind of under the radar. Do deaths during the holidays like really go under the radar? Might be. Might be. Because we don't pay attention to James Brown. We, also, don't, we don't celebrate James Brown like we should because he died on Christmas. Yeah, it's also Pele, I think. I think I imagine in like Brazil it was, or in the soccer world especially, it was absolutely tragic, but soccer is just not as prominent over here. You yeah, know? yeah. You want to do a you want to do a couple asking yeah, idiots because I got a idiots, man. I know you got to do some asking idiots, Taylor Gang. Johnny Boy eighty two. Oh, this is a good question. What mythical creature would improve the world most if it existed? Ooh, <sighs> what do you think, Schultz? Mythical creature would include what mythical improve creature would improve the world the world most, most if, it if it existed? Oh my God, I don't know. A lot. Well, what do you think? Um, unicorns. Well, yeah, people would. <laughs> sexualized unicorns probably yeah, I, I can see it now they'd be probably. using the unicorn horn as a dildo and just backing it up into plug. that thing. oh man it'd be crazy yeah um dragons we'd use as weapons dragons we use as weapons i would think something like genies Ooh, because people could make wishes but you know that that's a lot of power for somebody to have that's too much power man yeah, i would think genies um leprechauns maybe like anybody that can grant like wishes people that can heal you maybe fairies mm-hmm um, yeah, those are the things that I think, honestly, the Avengers, bro. <laughs> yeah, we might need the Avengers. The Avengers would improve the world the most. Avengers, X-Men, like mutants and shit. Yeah. The motherfuckers would act right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you know that this, this team of people yeah. that's going to come fuck shit up if yeah. you're not doing it right. You yeah. think Storm is going to stand for injustice? You yeah. don't want Storm on the side of the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't yeah. want those problems. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You don't want Wolverine's sticking up for all Canadians everywhere. Oh, you going to clown Drake? That's a good ass what point. the fuck is going to happen? That's a good ass It's the point. truth, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like probably Avengers and X-Men. Um, what about uh this? Uh, I got to do the one and then I'll leave this. Okay. Slimos44 said, are you cut from the Jonah Hill movie, Andrew? Uh, I think I have a line in it. What? what I do you think mean? I have a line in it. The Jonah Hill, out? Eddie Murphy one. Did it come out? No, it's not out yet. January 27th. Oh, there's an announcement. So I think I have a line in it. Why do you think uh, you're cut from it? Well, I mean, you can be cut from any movie. You know what I mean? They film a lot and then you can do it. But uh, I think I have a line in it. But I don't have the line. Remember that really embarrassing one that I gave to Eddie? And then Eddie's like, yeah. What was the line? Remember, I fucked up the line like five different times. No, I don't remember. So I, remember I told, fucked I up a line like five different times. Eddie Murphy is my fucking hero. Is the reason I do stand up, and I'm fucking up this line. And, you nervous, and bricked I'm up in front of Eddie. Bricked up, and then uh, and I was doing it, and then uh, there's this hilarious comic, Felipe. So I bomb like five times right in front of Eddie. Eddie doesn't even know how to improv with me. He just goes, "Yeah." And then there's another comic that comes in that has a line, uh, Felipe Esparza, who's fucking hilarious and brilliant. And he comes in, and he does this line, and Eddie stops the filming. Looks at him and goes, you're a comedic genius. 
Jesus. Oh. <laughs> How'd that make you feel? Oh, I, was, I mean, I was super happy for Felipe because he's just fucking awesome. But also this moment, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was like, the irony of this moment right here. But they cut my line. Man, that's the kind of shit I like. I know. It's great. It's great. <laughs> that's the kind of heart-wrenching shit. Oh, it's great. I like it. It's great. <laughs> I'm telling my dad, hey dad, I'm in a fucking movie with Eddie Murphy. And then the time. God, I know you couldn't handle that. God right. didn't want to give you that. God did not. <laughs> <laughs> want Eddie Murphy to say Andrew Schultz is a comedic genius. No, no, but maybe next year. Maybe next year. This but year, how maybe. funny would it be if we all knew I bombed that line, and then we all go to the theater and we're all waiting for that line, <laughs> and then you just hear Eddie go, "Yeah." <laughs> why did Why did Slim most think you're cut though? Like, where did he get that from? Like, because I always say that about every movie I'm oh, in. I think you, they gonna you, cut you, me you, from the whole you, thing. You. But apparently, I do have a line in it. So, oh, this, let's end on this one. Okay. Mitch, Mitch Matiana said, and "Then I gotta go." One thing you won't let get to you this year. Hmm. What's one thing you want to let to get to you this year, Schultz? Third world food, bro. I'm I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done, bro. I'm done with that shit. So I'm not letting that third world food get to me. With all due respect, I love you guys. It's amazing. You guys can digest it. My stomach's not built for that shit. So I'm I'm not letting that third world food. What about you? Uh, the opinions of strangers. Ooh. The opinion. I started to say the opinions of others, but really the opinions of strangers because I do value um my, opinions my, of your my friends' opinions. And, and real quick, I want to talk about that. There was a there's a clip there was a clip going around of me and Andrew. It was the old debate we had about who's bigger, Breakfast Club or Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. And I saw people having a discussion about that. And it was confusing to me because I was like, what the fuck? But but I realized it was an old clip. Very old clip. And um I wanna say this, man. Mm. The reason Schultz is my friend, and I hope that all of y'all have friends like this, ain't no yes men. I don't mm -hmm. have no yes men around me. I don't want no yes men around me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want everybody to share their opinions. And it says a lot about people when they think Schultz shouldn't have that opinion in regards to, to me. Yeah. It's like, no, this is why this is my guy. Because yeah. I know that he's going to tell me the truth always. And everybody around me is like that. Taylor is a too honest. Yeah. You know but what you I need mean? That. You need that kind like, of stuff. Yeah, Taylor's yeah. ridiculously yeah. on like. Everybody around me is honest. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. none of us being yes men, yes women to each other. And that's why we're winning. Yeah. I didn't feel like it was an insulting thing to say. I was just. It was a conversation. Yeah, like yeah. it was a, it was a conversation. It was a, a debate. Like, yeah. And it was just weird to me to see people debate that and try to spin it, it into something. But that's what people do. They want to create some drama. Out but of that's insecurity in them. And it also says what they expect out of the people around them. I don't expect that. I don't want nobody around me to tell me what I want to hear. Mm. I want people to, around me to tell me absolutely positively what they think. And you can, it, that doesn't mean that and other people do this, like they are afraid to even compliment because they think it's dick ride and whatever. Right. It's like, right. yo, if you're being honest with your bro, That's you right. can tell him when he's absolutely killing it That's and right. you can tell him when he's not. Absolutely. If you're too afraid to tell him when he's killing it, you're not being honest with 100%. him. A hundred percent. So I got no problem celebrating my homies, man. And you know me, I'm the biggest fan of, of you and all of your success. So that same here. Like there, you I, I, there you go. There you go. What you mean, man? There you go. This guy is so crazy. There you go. You gonna give me back what I gave you? <laughs> you get a little bit of that. See, now you about to start another goddamn yeah. debate. What you talking about? <laughs> Come on, son. I need my cut. You know podcast what I mean? talking about something else. You saw when he gave it to him, and he gave it to him. He tried to give oh, it back man. what he gave. What have white people done so well? <laughs> stolen the riches of Africans, bro. So you gonna bring back some African shit to a white person? I'm not gonna take a little bit. I'll put it in a museum or something. Oh, we'll do something God. about it. As always, if you listen to this yeah. podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, it should feel lighter, bro. <laughs> if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're absolutely right, too. Go Ghana! Go Ghana!